Okay, autofocus fine tune. I've been asked to make this video for quite some time. I don't watch other YouTube videos on photography. I can't stand to watch them. Uh, they're either uh, gear pimps or they're a bunch of no nothings. There's like no in between. You get a bunch of gear pimps, someone sniffing gear. Buy this! Check the link below! <laughs> There's some moron making us some videos like, what? Um, I thought I would check out a few of the autofocus fine tune videos and they suck. Um, some of them are highly inaccurate and uh, I decided, well, finally. I'll make the video. And uh, you're going to have to watch all three of these videos. This first video is just me talking, obviously telling you some points. The test chart is below in the link, so download that and print it out. Um, so, you know, the, the videos were just crazy. They're incredibly convoluted on autofocus fine tune uh, on YouTube or even online, just in general. They're just crazy convoluted. You know, buy this expensive autofocus fine tune chart. Well, you know, screw that ridiculousness. I mean, you could print it out for free. Uh, or they were just horribly inaccurate, or they're just telling you stuff that was just kind of like a half the truth. So anyway, this is the chart. It's my little chart. It's on iconfocus.com, testchart.jpg. Here you can see, this is what you're going to be focused on. Dead center of this black bar right here. And by the way, I added in the center right there, in very, very fine print, blurry images suck lemons. Uh, <laughs> you'll notice over here on either side, there's a set of numbers the exact same place on the other side, set of numbers. Starting at 0, 1 to 20 something, and the same thing on this uh, chart. Now, what you're going to have to do for autofocus fine tune, you're going to have to check each lens. You need to make sure your camera can do an autofocus fine tune. Now, what I've seen a lot of people do, they'll actually put the chart like at a 45 degree angle. This is 90. This would be half of that, 45. This is too steep. Why is it too steep? Well, I mean, obviously the closer you get to the plane of focus of your camera, it's not going to make you do You're not going to be able to fine-tune anything. I mean, why have it at a 45-degree angle? That's not right, is it? No, because the distance between here and here is shortened the more you bring it up. And if you bring it down, the more it expands. So you're able to fine-tune because fine autofocus tune at about this angle. You have to watch video number two and three where I actually show you exactly how to do this. Um, I'll show you behind the camera what I'm doing. It'll be much simpler than what I'm telling you in this video, but watch this video anyway. Uh, right now, I've got this at about 35, 30, 30 and 35 degrees, basically a hand above the table. You're going to have to have your camera and autofocus on, obviously. You're going to use the center point only. So if you have your autofocus set to group, or if you have it set to multi-point, you're going to have to take that off. Single point only, and you're going to be focused dead center here on the black bar. The center of the black bar and the very center of that black bar. You want some uh, bright illumination, you're going to shoot in mirror up. Um, you want to be square to the chart. In other words, if my chart is here, I'm back here, obviously you're going to have to be at least further away than the minimum focusing distance, obviously so, correct? Correct. So, it has to be perfectly even right here, your camera, but also your, your uh, chart can't be one way or the other. If it's skewed this way or skewed this way, then what's going to happen is, is that these numbers will indicate the different information than the numbers on the other side. So this has to be perfectly perpendicular to your camera. That's what you need to make certain of. You need to make certain that the chart is perfectly flat on the board. I mean, don't put this on a piece of cardboard or something so that this chart is like bowed in or bowed out. That isn't going to help you either, obviously, is it? Um, you don't have to multiply times 10 uh, relative to the focal length as far as the distance you need to be away on autofocus uh, fine-tuning uh, your camera like some of these stupid websites say. Uh, anywhere between like 4 to 8 feet. Obviously if it's a longer focal length distance lens you have to be at least the minimum focal uh, minimum uh, focusing distance away. Um, front focus and uh, rear focus. Now what you're going to do is uh, even on this old Nikon D3 it's the exact same place it is on a Nikon D750, D810, D700 you're going to go in the setup menu. In the setup menu, you're going to go to autofocus fine tune. And it's going to ask you if you want to turn autofocus fine tune off or on. Obviously, I want it on. Okay. Saved value. I've seen some uh, knuckle, knuckle putzes online that were changing the default value for a lens. Well, you don't want to change the default value. That changes it for the whole uh, spectrum of lenses that you have. That means it's actually changing the default value for every lens you slap on there. You don't want to change that. The only way you want to change the default value is if the camera is screwed up in autofocus in general and therefore it is changing it for every damn lens. What you want to do is go to saved value up at top and there's going to be a range here. 
you're going to go uh, down minus 1, 2, 7, 8, 10, 12, and up from 0, uh, from plus 1, plus 2. Plus. If your uh, camera is back focusing, the easiest way to think about this is you're going to drag it closer by bringing it to the minus setting. So if it turns out your camera, you'll see very clear what I'm talking about, video number 2. If your camera is focusing up here, you're going to take the value into the minus setting. So you're dragging it closer to right here, the black bar 0. If it is front focusing, then you're actually going to to take it uh, into uh, the plus value. In other words, you're pushing it away is the easiest way to think about it. So it's focusing too close to you, plus value to bring it to zero. It's focusing too far away, minus value. You're going to drag it closer, minus, or you're going to push it farther away, plus. Front focus, you're going to go towards the plus. Too far away, you're going to drag it towards the minus. Um, like I said, between 30, 35 degrees, 40 maximum. You don't want the chart up this tall. It needs to be about this angle which is about 35 this is about 34 degrees in between 30 35 degrees it doesn't have to be precise as long as it's not this as long as it's not that because that defeats uh, defeats the purpose of autofocus fine tuning and uh, check out the video after these three videos on autofocus fine tuning where i show you the specifics in video number two number three about how to you'll be behind the camera with another camera showing you me autofocus fine tuning the camera that you are not focusing and recomposing. A lot of people that think that their uh, camera lens is having focus issues are in fact not having any uh, damn issues at all. Let me turn autofocus fine tune off on this camera. Is that they're focused and recomposing. They think the lens is off, but what they've done is they focused and recomposed and then that brings the plane of focus of what they previously focused on, say someone's eye, out of the plane of focus and then they will deduce that the camera is uh, auto focusing in the wrong spot that's not the case focus and recompose if you got someone 30 feet away and you're taking a portrait shot with an 85 millimeter lens that's not an issue you can focus recompose all you want you focus recompose the 200 millimeter away on your scenery or some buildings no issue you're focusing at uh, macro or portraiture or you know some fire hydrant or some tree that's 15 10 feet away something like that depending on the lens Depending on the aperture, you can't, obviously it's incredibly aperture dependent, especially wide open, it's incredibly imperative. You can't sit there and focus on someone's eye and then recompose the shot. You're going to wonder why the eye was out of focus. Well, my lens was out of focus. No. What you did is you focused and recomposed rather than recompose and actually change your autofocus point. There are multiple autofocus points in the back of your uh, DSLR, your Fuji, your phony camera, whatever you got. It's there for a reason. So focus and recomposing is not an issue. If it's far off, you know, I've been focusing and recomposing most of my life. But you have to know when the hell you can't focus and recompose. So check that video out. I'll be talking about that briefly. So that does not indicate that your lens or your camera is having an issue. On autofocus fine-tune, uh, if you're shooting a zoom lens, I've actually found that, uh, like on this 24 to 85, that I'm going to autofocus fine-tune the lens at 85. You can only set one set value for your lens. Um, and I've got 12 menu settings on uh, this camera and the D750 I'm filming this on where I can set the autofocus fine tuning on each individual lens but I can't set it for each individual focal length on each specific lens I'm going to have to set one value for one lens period so on any zoom lens zoom, max it out you know 80 to 200 autofocus fine tune it at uh, 200 I've never seen an issue where you've actually uh, checked and set the autofocus fine tune to say 200 and then it turns out that it's off at 50 uh, after you checked it and verified it via the information on video number two, check it again. Turn the camera off, drop the camera back on the tripod again, check it again to verify your results. So double check at the very least. Uh, change and set your values. Um, there's no reason. I've seen some people talk about splitting the difference. Say in a zoom, well, I got a value of 24 and I got a different value at 85. Well, that's not really the case. Well, I'll take the difference between the two and split it. You don't need to do that. I've never found that it actually aids or benefits you in any way, shape, or form. Um, what you need to have your camera on, you need to have, obviously, it on autofocus. You damn well better be certain that not only do you have single point autofocus set, but you damn well better be centered in on the dead center spot of this black bar on the chart. You need to be in aperture priority, and you need to have the aperture all the way open. Obviously, you're not helping yourself in autofocus fine-tuning if you close down your aperture, are you? needs to be on a tripod, needs to be flat. This chart needs to be absolutely, the base of it, perpendicular to the plane of the front of the lens. It can't be skewed like this or like this. It has to be perfectly perpendicular. It needs to be brightly lit. Shoot and mirror up. You don't need to use a cable release. Um, 
30 degrees as I mentioned and uh, your chart needs to be flat on the board so it's not warped aperture priority mirror up okay it's that simple check out video number two and number three because this isn't going to tell you all the specifics you're going to have to see it for yourself and I'll have another camera behind uh, my D750 and I'll show you autofocus fine tuning in video number two and three and uh, you can download this chart below and you need to print it out it's on nikonfocus.com forward slash test chart dot jpeg the link is below it's like 3.5 megabytes uh, print it out and uh, then do what I said and uh, let's make my autofocus fine tuning easy I mean these other idiots out there their videos are just insane quite frankly I've already made video number two and number three by the way so I know how they turned out I already made them so uh, check those two videos and then autofocus I will have within this three part video the best, the most complete, the most simple, the most accurate autofocus uh, fine tuning videos on YouTube. If you like this video and you damn well should because it's certainly the best on YouTube for autofocus fine tuning you can always drop me a buck or two, tell me to jump off a cliff, whatever tickles your pickle, whatever makes you happy and uh, I'll catch you in video number two and three which I've already made by the way. Bye.